Our charity is called the Centre West Trust um, and we offer therapeutic horsemanship to um, seven disadvantaged people in Warwickshire and um, across the country. The idea is to offer therapeutic horsemanship work that improves confidence, self-esteem, um, communication skills, just personal development really. And to have a large animal follow you around with no lead rope or um, you know, just interact with you in that way can be hugely empowering for people. I started the charity in 2007 um, because I set up a, a small community project because mm -hmm. um, I wanted to offer therapeutic horsemanship in South Warwickshire. Um, and then um, it started off as just a small community project and then we built it up and then we got registered, registered charity status a couple of years ago. Um, I also run a community interest company which actually runs the work with the horses and then the charity just fundraisers to offer places to people who can't afford to access our work any other way. Yes, you're taller than everyone now, aren't you? Yes. It benefits, and uh, we say disabled and disadvantaged, which is quite a broad um, term. We work with people with autism, um, mental and emotional difficulties, sensory issues, um, learning difficulties, um, eating disorders, you know, anybody really who we feel can benefit from spending time with the horses. The idea is to offer therapeutic horsemanship work that improves confidence, self-esteem, um, communication skills, just personal development really from just, you know, therapeutic sessions with the horses. But therapeutic horsemanship is based around um, understanding horses, understanding how, you know, equine communication, equine behaviour, and then applying what we would use to train the horses and work with the horses to working with individuals. So for example, we could do a groundwork session um, where we might just start with by grooming the horse, which is a really relaxing um, activity for both the horse and the individual. And then we could move on to um, horse whispering techniques like join up, where we, we teach people how to communicate with the horse from the ground and then get the horse to join up with them and form a partnership with them. And to have a large animal follow you around with no lead rope or um, you know, just interact with you in that way can be hugely empowering for people. Um, for people who maybe don't have much control over their lives or feel, um, you know, have low confidence and low self-esteem, to have this, to work with this huge animal in a way where the, the animal respects you and interacts with you, you know, can make a real difference to how somebody feels about themselves and also it teaches self-awareness, um, body language, interaction, communication. So there's lots of different elements that go into it. Today was horseboy work um, and I'm a, a certified horseboy practitioner and horseboy is specifically for people with autism and it's a six stage process which basically um, revolves around environments, so you create the right environment <coughs> first which is an autism friendly environment um, so the children can, can run freely, it's a yes environment, it's all about no horrible sensory triggers like fluorescent lighting or humming noises, that, you know, we want it to be very natural, very much in nature. Um, and then we do sensory work. You saw the sensory work where Dee was lying on the horse, um, and that's very much around relaxation, stopping the stimming behaviour. You know what stimming is, where um, somebody with autism might flap or do very kind of, you know, it's stimulating behaviour, rocking, things like that. And you notice when Dee lay on the horse, he was perfectly calm and quiet and still for the only time, really, all day. And it's just that, that relaxes um, people, and it's just a really lovely, lovely, relaxing, fun thing to do. Can you tell me about your bunnies? And then following on from sensory, we move on to back riding. Um, if the child's small enough, we'll ride with them in the saddle in front of us so that we can get a nice collected pace, um, which releases oxytocin, which is a, a feel-good hormone, which relaxes the child and then opens them up to learning. Um, with D today, we had him in the long lines because he's too big to, for back riding. Um, but the, the main thing about um, the horseboy process is your, your voice in the child's ear. If you've got them in the saddle with you, you're giving deep pressure and you're also getting the nice collective movement from the horse. So it's very much about um, not any threatening frontal gaze, you know, and communicating. It's not about horse riding. What we were doing with Dee today was not about teaching him how to ride. It was about getting him to interact, communication, 
um, which you know is really the key thing, but also getting him to relate to the exterior world, which is a really important thing for autism as well. Well, he's always loved horses. Um, he's always well, he just loves animals in general. Yeah. Um, but he's always loved horses, and uh, we looked, uh, we did a few lessons you know, normal lessons which didn't go so well. And then we looked up online uh, uh, people who did riding for children, specifically with autism rather than physical disabilities. Um, and we found Nicky through that. And um, he came, he used to come just every week, uh, do sensory work and do riding. Um, uh, and then they go for, for walks out and about. It sort of helps him um, with his understanding of animals and what they need and what they can, you know, what, what, how much pleasure they can bring. So I think yeah. he's learned to enjoy the animals um, and also his relationships with other people because um, he's very limited to just me and his father, really, and very close family. So it's been nice because he's made other friends, if you like, you know, the, 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 the staff and the volunteers that work here talks to them and relates to them in a really nice way so it's been good for that. What's happened? Oh. Bailey's having a poo day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. You clean it up? Uh, we'll clean it up in a minute. <laughs> Ew, stinky. From What's back happened? riding you move on to perspective taking theory of mind you saw that we were playing tag so it's a rule based game so we were teaching D um, or he was teaching us really. What kind of tag are we playing D? Are we playing freeze tag? Let, let's freeze Poppy. So we're freezing you guys. So this is freeze tag. So you, you're frozen now. And, okay. Pop, and Poppy's and frozen. And Poppy's frozen. You know, rules and um, how to, um, you know, how to understand interaction. And so the tag is, you know, it's one of the first things that you understand. You're it. No, I'm it. Oh, no, I'm scared. Not me. Don't get me. Don't get me. It's that sense of, of self and you and, you know, perspective and theory of mind. Really got him. You're Henry. Henry are frozen. You're frozen. I'm Henry. And Henry's frozen. Today's been really good because uh, it's a new site for Dee, he's not been here before um, and he's not actually been on the horses for about a year um, and he's really enjoyed it, he's sort of fallen back into, uh, into the routine really quickly, um, he's really pleased to see everybody. Freeze Ray, 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 all we still frozen. Is that the minion? Yes. All we still frozen. All we still frozen. So how are we going to move Dee? Let's stay there. We have to stay here. Okay. Unfrozen, 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 unfrozen. It's really, um, a really good way to start interacting with everybody, having a lot of fun. And, you know, this is a great way for building social skills as well, which is a really important part of autism. Um, because often, you know, um, social, social skills are something that children with autism really struggle with. Whereas you can see at the moment, he's not struggling with social skills at all. You know, he's completely relaxed and enjoying himself and talking to everybody. From there we go on to academics. So you didn't come out for a walk with us in the woods, but when we went out for the walk, we were talking to Dee about nature and about all the different colours and plants. And uh, at one point we, were, we saw purple plants and we were going, oh, so where'd you get purple from? What makes purple? And he's like, blue and red, you know, so it's just you, you introduce learning elements into it. And from looking at the nature, you can talk about photosynthesis, so you can bring science into it, you can talk about you know, anything really. You can bring any kind of academics into it, but it's in a way that the child is relaxed and they're, um, you know, they're open to learning, they're moving, they're not sat in a classroom. Because for a lot of children with autism, when they have to sit still in a classroom, they have to use all their energy to focus on sitting down and staying still. So then they find it impossible to learn anything else because that's taking up 100% of their attention. Whereas if you have a child on a horse, they've got this lovely rocking motion, they're relaxed, you know, they've got, you know, nice, beautiful stimulation around them, nice environment, and so it opens up opens them up for learning. So who are we going to freeze next? Uh, let's go and free... David! But I'm on your David's team! David's on our team! Frozen! Oh. Um, he's really enjoying being with the horses and, uh, and the other animals as well. Obviously he loves the dogs and he's really, you know, really pleased to see everyone. So it's been really successful today. He remembers, lot, you know, remembers lots of things that he's talked to the, uh, talked to the uh, volunteers about before and remembers their favourite colours and things like that. So it's been nice to watch him communicating 
remembering people, uh, you know, asking, asking questions and, yeah, having a chat, which is nice. Okay, well, Bertie is um, a Dale's cob. He used to um, live in London. He worked in London his whole life. He was a um, carriage horse at Hampton Court Palace. Him and another horse, Ted, were a driving pair. And then I bought them when they retired from um, driving. And um, yeah, and he's one of our best therapy horses. He's our best sensory horse. He's very good at his tricks. With the best smile, smile. <laughs> the reason that we do tricks um, is if you think, if you have a child who's completely non-verbal, who doesn't communicate very much, and you can give them a one word syllable like smile, yeah. and then you get an instant response from the yeah. horse, which, you know, makes the child laugh, and then, so they get an instant, instant return from it. And so, you know, that, just teaching that one word syllable, that one syllable word can, you know, can increase communication in children. So the reason that we do the tricks is so that we can teach, um, teach children things like how to count. So like, what's one plus two? Well, let's find out. One, two, three. And then from um, the academics, we then move on to self-advocacy, which is where people are able to tell us what they're interested in. Because being able to, um, you know, have the self-advocacy and express yourself and express your needs and your wants one of the most important survival instincts that, you know, or survival skills that any human being can have. So for Dee to be able to express himself and tell us stuff and teach us stuff, you know, that's amazing. Kofi. Hey, Kofi. He's, He's at home. You know, He's at your there. new dog. It's his new dog, yeah. He's talking it's two. Isn't Kofi and who's the other one called? I don't have another one. And your, oh, who's your old one called? Molly. And your Molly. She's in the clouds. Do you know why? Do I know why? Yeah. Because she's old. Well, and, she was old. And many. And now we've. What's happened to him? Probably is. So, probably about him. And so, he has this amazing communication where he's now able to. Um, tell us about the things that he loves, you know, which is really great. Mainly it's just the, the charity was set up specifically to, to fund people who can't afford to access the work any other way. Um, so, you know, for, for families who can't afford to pay for horse riding or pay, you know, however much it is, £45 an hour for a session, you know, it's a lot of money for people to find. So the charity, we set it up because we wanted everyone to be able to access the work and benefit from being around the horses, not just people who can afford it. Well, we, we always need funding. There's, there's never kind of a top limit. You know, we always, we always need funding. But really, it'd be nice if we could get enough funding that we could continually offer funded sessions to families and children and adults that we work with. But yeah, in regards to what we'd like, we just would like to be able to fund, really, camp places every year. We'd like to be able to, you know, buy more equipment that we could use and, and stables and things that we just need to help us operate. But really, the, the core funding that we need is just to offer the sessions, to pay for the sessions for people who can't afford to come. But ideally, I'd like the charity to be able to fund a lot more people. It'd be nice if we could fund people, you know, a lot of people locally and from across the country to come to us, but maybe also fund people to go to other stables in other parts of the country. You know, I'd like to, to develop so that we can fund more people who can't access therapeutic horsemanship to have access to it. interesting getting involved in the Centaurus Trust or finding out more information you can um, access us through our website which is centauristrust.org um, and the best way to get involved really is just to contact us and we'll let you know what we're doing.